So continuing with our lecture on the solar growth model. Let's talk about a few assumptions. So we're going to start with the production function. That's going to be a key object in this model. So production function is that output at time t. Uh, these really should be consistent. So actually, I think this should be output at time t. In this course, we're going to use both continuous time models, where t can have any value between 0 and infinity. Uh, and we're also going to use discrete time models, where t uh, is a natural number or a counting number, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So typically, when we have continuous time model, we're going to uh, write things as a function of t. And when we have a discrete time model, we're going to write the time as a subscript. Okay, so this model is going to be a continuous time. So we're going to have y of t output at time t, instantaneous output if you like, is equal to a function of capital at time t, and then a t times l t. And uh, as you see right, I wrote a is productivity or labor augmenting productivity here. So the way you want to think about this is that this could be like average level of education or something um, per worker. And then this is like the number of workers. Okay, so here's the labor supply at time t in hours maybe. So the higher is a, the more productive is each hour of work. All right, so what are the properties we're going to assume about this f function? There's going to be a couple. So the first one is that we're going to assume that f is constant returns to scale, which means that if we double all of the inputs, then we're going to double the output. Okay. So if we multiply the amount of capital by mu, we multiply the amount of effective labor or human capital, if you like, by mu, the, both of them, then we're going to multiply output by mu. Okay. So Double the two inputs, you'll double the output. Have the two inputs, you have the output. Okay. So that's the first property. Uh, this property is reasonable because it says that if you have a factory producing something and then you create an identical factory next door, exactly the same, same, number, same building, same number of machines, same number of workers, then it's going to produce exactly the same amount as the original factory. Uh, so, so far, so reasonable. The next thing we're going to do is rewrite this production function. I guess this isn't a property any longer, but we're going to work with a version of this production function that's called the intensive form. Uh, so we're going to write this little y, which we define. Oh, excuse me. Did I pause or not? Okay, I apologize for that. That was a junk call. Um, you know, it's like with this, like just a moment before they pick up the phone, you know that it's not a real call. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we're going to write out the intensive form, uh, which is going to be, so we're going to define this object little y, which is going to be output divided by the amount of human capital in the economy. So we might call this output per unit of human capital. Um, so if we're going to divide yt by al, that's the same as dividing f by al. Okay, And through this property, suppose that mu here is 1 divided by al, we can then sort of get the uh, factors to look like this, right? We have AL divided by AL, that's one, and then K divided by AL. Okay, so now we're gonna define K divided by AL as little k, or the physical capital per unit of human capital. And then since the second term is always one, we can just say little f, we can just redefine a new function, little f of little k, which is just big F of little k with one as its second argument. So let me actually write that out. So little y is 
output per unit of human capital. This is just how to talk about it. Okay, little k is physical capital. per unit of human capital. Okay. Finally, now this is a property again, we're gonna make an assumption about the properties of this little f function. We're gonna assume that little f of zero is zero. So if you have no capital, right, so that physical capital per unit of human capital is zero. If you have no physical capital, then we're going to assume that production is zero. Is zero. We're going to assume that uh, as you increase the amount of physical capital per unit of human capital, then we're going to increase production. Okay, so as the economy gets more and more physical capital, it's going to have more and more production. And then we're going to assume that the second derivative of this little f function with respect to k, little k, is less than zero, which says that for each additional unit of physical capital we add to the economy, we're going to get less additional output. We're still gonna get more output, right? The f prime of little k is always positive, but f double prime of k says that there's decreasing marginal, you know, decreasing returns to increasing little k. So how do you wanna think about this? Suppose we've got a uh, 100 workers and we start buying computers. Well, the first computer is gonna make uh, the workers much more efficient. They have, now have a computer, right? It's gonna increase output. Then we buy them 50 computers and that's still making them more efficient because you've got 100 workers, but maybe some of the workers need to do other things that don't require a computer. So having those additional computers isn't so useful. And then finally, once we have more than 100 computers, we only have 100 workers, it's like you can just keep adding computers, it's not really going to make the uh, output, it's not really going to raise output much more. Okay, every, every worker already has her own computer. So anyway, yeah. so that's the idea here between this decreasing returns. Okay, and then finally, we have what are called the inauda conditions. Those these say that uh, as the amount of physical capital per unit of human capital goes to infinity, then the change, uh, then, you know, basically the additional production you get is getting closer and closer to zero. So the idea is, again, you know, once you've got 100 computers, adding another computer, when you only have 100 workers, it's not that useful. If you have a million computers, and 100 workers, it's really, really not very useful to add additional computers, okay? The other one is that when a uh, little k goes to zero, then uh, then this f prime of k is gonna go to infinity. So using my computer example, that first computer, you know, here formally we're thinking about even a fraction of a computer, but you know, just intuitively, the first computer is really, really useful for that factory that has 100 workers in it. The first one is the most useful one. And that's informally what this formal statement is saying. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna just do one more thing and then we'll stop and do another video. But if we look at, uh, let's look at a particular example of a production function, the Cobb-Douglas production function, it looks like this. Uh, so it's capital to some power alpha with alpha between zero and one, and then human capital to some power one minus alpha with yeah, one minus alpha. All right, so let's quickly verify that this is constant returns to scale. So recall the constant returns to scale says that if we double both or if we multiply both of the inputs by some number, we're going to multiply the outputs by some number, okay? So let's do that. So let's think about mu times k both to the power alpha and then mu times al to the power
power 1 minus alpha. Okay, that's going to be... We can bring that mu outside. You can see we're going to have an alpha. We're going to have a 1 minus alpha. So mu to the power alpha times mu to the power 1 minus alpha. Well, you can add the, the powers. So we're going to end up with mu to the power 1 times k to the power alpha al to the power 1 minus alpha. And you can see that that is just mu times y. Okay, so this is exactly what we want to prove. If we multiply the inputs by mu, then we multiply the output by mu. Okay. What's the intensive form? Well, let's take uh, intensive form, as you recall, is y divided by al. In this case, that's going to be 1 divided by al times k alpha al 1 minus alpha. Okay. Now, um, let's split this al uh, between alpha and 1 minus alpha. So in other words, we can say this is the same as 1 divided by al to the power alpha, this whole thing, al to the power 1 minus alpha. Okay, why is that? Well, because we can just add the powers here and see that that's the same as al to the power 1. Okay, and then we still have our k alpha, al, 1 minus alpha. Okay, now let's take this al alpha and put it inside, put it together with the k. So we're going to get k divided by al all to the power alpha. And then here we're going to have al to the 1 minus alpha divided by al to the 1 minus alpha. Well, that's just 1. So I actually don't even have to write that. Okay, so then here you can see that this physical capital divided by human capital, that's just our definition of little k. Okay, so... That's actually the intensive form. So our intensive form is, let's put this little y. Little y is equal to little k to the power alpha. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do here is verify the anata conditions. So one of them was that as uh, little k goes to infinity, the derivative of this function is going to go to zero. So let's take the derivative here. Let's take so our f prime of little k is equal to alpha little k to the power alpha minus 1. This, um, so just to make it so it's easier to look at, since alpha minus 1 is a negative number, alpha is less than 1. Let's rewrite this as little k to the power 1 minus alpha. 1 over little k to the power 1 minus alpha. And now you can see that as little k goes to infinity, this thing is going to zero, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna write it. This is condition one, you're not a condition one. You're not a one. Okay? You're not a condition two was that, well, maybe I won't write you not a one because it's actually the same equation. You're not a condition two was as little k goes to zero, then f prime of k is going to infinity. But you can see that as this denominator gets closer and closer to zero, this thing is exploding. In fact, it's exploding to infinity. Uh, so that's all I mean. Verify. So I just did it using words, but you know, if you want, you could write out some notation. But I think that's enough. Like for an exam, if I said verify the Inada conditions, you know, of course you'd have to write out what I just said. But um, you know, you just write out the f prime of k and then say. Okay, as little k goes to infinity, then you can see that this expression is going to zero. If little k is going to zero, then you can see that this expression is going to infinity. So uh, that's the anonymous conditions. Okay, so I'll stop there.